Good morning, good morning. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Welcome, welcome. My name is Alex. Let me introduce myself if you haven't been in one of my classes here virtually or at the Columbia County Libraries. My name is Alex. I teach the computer classes at the Columbia County Libraries, uh, the Evans branch, uh, the uh, Harlan branch, and also the the Uchi Creek, now the Grovetown Library, yay, now that it's officially open. Yay, 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 yay. And today we're actually doing a gadget help with me. So this is class is kind of just a drop-in. This is where you get to ask questions, ask tech stuff, uh, see if I can help in any way, virtually. This is stuff when we were um, doing stuff at the library. Of course, right now we're not doing any classes at the library. But when we were, this was like a drop-in. This is still kind of a drop-in, virtual drop-in, I guess. And uh, ask questions about uh, your tech gadget, see if I can help in any way. And definitely feel free to post it in the chat. Now, one of the things is us being on YouTube now, not just on Facebook, uh, to be able to post in our chat, you need to make sure that you have uh, logged in uh, to YouTube to be able to post. And I'm actually going to... So make sure that you're logged into YouTube so that you can post, uh, make comments, and of course, hit subscribe and hit like and all that good stuff too, okay? <laughs> Got a little bit of a meme right there. Just thought that was pretty funny. Let me talk about some of our other classes while everybody's kind of coming into the classroom and everything. Big thing is, please post questions into the chat. And the big, big question I always ask about classes and stuff is how can I help okay I want to help how can I help what questions do you have now yesterday was Tuesday today is Wednesday okay We're getting close to the end of July we did our scratch introduction to basics and coding class yesterday and of course this morning we're doing our gadget help with Q&A with me Alex hello and then at 2.30, we're going to be doing our Columbia County Library, uh, li oh, excuse me, <laughs> uh, for Columbia County Library. Um, now, the deal is I'm posting these links. It's all on the same GCHRL.org video uh, channel on YouTube, but we're posting, I'll post the links into the Facebook uh, pages as well. So the Columbia County Library, we're doing Scratch. Let's make a game, which will be today at 2.30. A really fun class. Hope you'll come join me for that. We're gonna to learn to make two games. We're gonna make a ghost hunters game and kind of like a pong game, uh, ball bounce, and then it will. It will hopefully, we'll have plenty of time. We also have one that's kind of a boat race game, which is a lot of fun. And then on Thursday, we're gonna be doing a Google search and the internet safety basics class. One that that's the third part of the class. That class is for the new Grovetown Library. Yay. <laughs> and one of the things we're going to be doing in that is uh, learn about Google a little bit more, becoming a better searcher. Okay. And also we've added a new uh, part uh, for, for, for demand. <laughs> Popular demand. There you go. Popular demand. Basically about also including how to spot fake news how to do a little bit of research, what websites kind of list fake news and stuff. So any kind of scams, rumors going around, that class is, uh, that's the class we covered that. And then at 2.30, we're gonna be doing uh, introduction to Raspberry Pi computing and project ideas. Now, basically, if we were in on teaching on ground right now, of course, we're all at home staying safe and everything, we'd actually be doing a hands-on physical Pi computing with our computers and our little uh, Raspberry Pis at the library. But we're not right now, so we're kind of doing an introduction to the class, and I'm gonna be doing some hands-on parts as well. So, we actually got a new box that came in the mail. Ooh. So, we actually looked at our box a little bit. Yeah, it's a little bit transparent when I hold it in the right place, right? So basically, we op we'll be opening that box tomorrow. And also, we're getting to know a little bit about what's in this box right here. Ooh, okay. We listen to it. <laughs> I 
all kinds of neat little gadgets in there that connect up to our Raspberry Pi. So we'll be doing that tomorrow. So please come join me for that. And here's kind of a schedule, and I'll disappear because I don't want to be in the way. Here's a schedule for all our classes for this month. Uh, these videos should still be up and available. Uh, most of these were done on the Facebook, so you have to go to the Evans Library page, or the, excuse me, the Columbia County Library and Evans page, the Harlem Library page, and the Grovetown Library page to watch most of these, or they'll be on the GCHRL videos channel, okay? We'll have a new schedule coming out at the end of the month. I mean, excuse me, the end of the week. <laughs> so on Thursday, I'll post the, the new schedule for the next week. And also, don't forget, you can go to gchrl.org for more information about our classes. And of course, let you know that our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Okay, Curbside Holds Pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details. Of course, you can call into the Columbia County Libraries Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. to ask questions. And don't forget to like our Facebook pages so you'll get notified when I uh, post something or when I, uh, um, well, we're not going live on there, but we're going live on Facebook. So if any of the other librarians become live or anything like that with story time, uh, gadget help for teen, not gadget help. <laughs> uh, Hands-on STEM for teens and stuff, and uh, also like our videos here on Facebook and also subscribe as well. So it's going back here. Yay, I'm back. Okay, so this is pretty neat. This is our uh, gadget help, of course. So just kind of stop in. And I guess I should go back to the, uh, because that's really, okay, there you go. Welcome to, welcome to class right there. Post your questions in the chat. Uh, that's why I'm here. Uh, please don't forget to share our videos uh, with others so that they can see them later. And if, if no one shows up to ask a bunch of questions, not to worry, this is a drop-in, so someone could drop by at any time and ask questions about tech stuff. And that's why I'm here to help out try to do the best I can if, if I can't answer it hopefully I can send you in the right direction Ooh, is it to the left is it to the right or is it to a certain website okay so that's what we'll be doing today and also I'll be talking about some of the kind of in the background kind of flipping back and forth talking about some of the resources that the libraries have at GC uh, the resources that we are, have available at the gchrl.org website mm-hmm so that's what we'll be doing today. So does anybody have any questions? So let's go ahead and let's pull up our Here's our library page. Now, some of the stuff I'll talk about a little bit, just kind of going back and forth while I kind of wait for folks to come ask me questions. Uh, we'll talk about some of the resources that are free from the library, okay? Uh, some of these topics we'll cover. 
will be about the uh, library resources class, which we'll have coming up next month. And also, one of the new classes we'll have is a video editing class. We'll have that coming up as well. So I'll post the, the, the full schedule on Thursday's classes, so be aware for that. And also we have a new class which is called uh, Scratch the Python. So this afternoon's class at 2.30 will actually be a, a uh, coding class uh, but with Scratch. And then one of the new classes we're going to have coming out next month, which I got, I've uh, finished the class, so I've gotten certified as a uh, Raspberry Pi to Scratch instructor <laughs> for, uh, through Future Learn and the uh, uh, Raspberry Pi uh, uh, organization, I guess you'd say. <laughs> so, yeah. So, it's Introduction to Python, which is going to be pretty fun. And it actually has uh, one of the websites we're going to cover actually kind of turns Python uh, coding into like little Lego blocks similar to Scratch. And the little pieces will not go together. And I will tell you this, except for certain things, it actually makes uh, uh, just, just even someone that's used Python for a few years, not a super expert on it, but project-based expert on the certain projects that we do with our Raspberry Pi uh, classes. Uh, it makes coding pretty quick. You just drag the blocks over there, you put them in the right place, but you already probably need a little bit of knowledge about what, of course, project you're working on and everything. So the interesting th part about that is uh, to do that and then to actually have it where you know the code's right and you know it because the computer basically made it and um, kind of going like, why is it more coding like this? Which is kind of interesting. So of course our website has more information here and I'm gonna actually zoom in. Mostly I'll zoom in stuff like this just so that it's as big as it can be on the screen so everybody can see it. So a lot of our programs now are of course virtual. Okay. Some on our class today. Yay! This is us right here. Can you believe that? Superstar. And then the Scratch Let's Make a Game class is right there for 2.30. <laughs> and there's our introduction to Raspberry Pi class on Thursday. All right, so let's go ahead and let's talk about some of our resources here. So if you go up to our menu and left click there on the side, uh, some of the big resources of course is people want to know how can I get uh, to the books, okay? I want to get to the, the e-books and I want to get to the free audio books for, through the library. Free uh, e-books, free audio books, how exactly do I do that, okay? Now like I said, we'll go a lot of a lot more detail into a lot of this stuff. I'm just kind of doing a, a kind of an overview. Okay. <laughs> oh, hello, Mac. Mac, hello, hello. How are you? Do you have any questions? Good. I'm glad to hear you're doing great.
Okay. Galaxy A30. Huh? All right, what questions do you have? <laughs> Happy to help. How about that? And just a little side note, the easiest way to find our YouTube channel is just a search GCHRL videos YouTube. <laughs> and then boom, there it is. Look, it even says I'm live right now. How about that? Okay, Mac, um, uh, get your questions uh, together and ask away. I'm going to go ahead and keep talking about a little bit of RDB digital stuff. Okay, good. There you are. Okay, need help taking pictures. There are too many settings. I bought it for pictures, okay? I've heard that this uh, phone actually takes fantastic pictures. So that's really good now. It's not Android, I mean, excuse me, it's not iPhone, it's an Android. Uh, iPhone is what I personally have. Uh, the Android phones, of course, their system works a little bit different. It is a Samsung. Um, what's the biggest questions you have about taking pictures, I guess, say? Yes, there is a little bit of delay, uh, probably in the comments, the me seeing it, the me actually replying to it as well. So do realize that. A little bit of the delay. Let's see. Oh, I know what I'd do. Let me see. I bet I can pull up a manual. Here's a little bit about our camera, okay? And if I get in the way too much, I'll move out of the way. If I can zoom in a little bit.
we do do a photography class which we don't have scheduled uh, next month but the next month we'll do one um, we covered the basics of photography getting the pictures off the camera also backing up your pictures funny because I actually have two screens so because I'm in the bottom uh, right hand corner of the screen that you guys see when I actually turn to look at the uh, <laughs> the screen that you guys see uh, it always looks like I'm kind of looking up at what's on the screen to me <laughs> which is kind of funny mm -hmm. It has a scene optimizer button. Interesting. Here's your current mode. So this is kind of a screenshot from the manual with this this uh, phone slash camera <laughs> phone camera. And we talk about this in the photography class a little bit, controlling the exposure so I guess this is the brightness adjustment is what they're calling it autofocus is a big one okay oh look there's a mouse on my head bloop, 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 bloop. I won't do that again that was silly let's see Okay, here's one. Here's your normal picture zoom because it has a lens. Here's your more wider angle zoom is what it shows. So your basic, and here's your ultra wide. Okay, so to change those two, you go right here, it shows. Like some trees. Some closer trees behind it. Some close trees, I guess and some further away trees because it's supposed to make it look like a wider shot okay Now, if you have any questions about exposure and stuff, I could actually pull up the photography class's handout and talk about it a little bit too. You can take a series of photos or create an animated GIF uh, by tapping and holding the camera button, it says. Uh, take a burst of shots, so it takes a whole bunch, more than one. Okay. So a lot of settings for the camera. How do I use the different settings and how can I insert uh, SD card? Okay, so let's let's work with the SD card. Let's see if I can actually, usually it's a little bit small. Let's SIM card, there's my memory card. So let's talk, talk about putting in our micro SD card, okay? Whoop, I almost dropped something there. Let's see, your device's memory card uh, capacity may vary. Other models and others, uh, and some memory cards don't be compatible. Let's see. It says use caution. It'll format it when you insert it. 
Do you realize that when you're looking for pictures, one of the things with uh, being able to add more memory is that a lot of time we actually have to deal with uh, moving uh, files around or trying to find our files now, not just because it's just in the main photo area. Do you realize it's under my files SD card folder it says here. So it actually shows, oh, okay. Looks like you'll need a little tool. So it looks like here's the, the ear part. Here's the microphone at the bottom and where you plug it in, okay. It looks like it's on the top left. And this is not the SIM card, this is the micro SD card. It says you need a little bit of maybe a little paper clip. There's like a little circle here, okay. So if you have like a little bit of a paper clip, uh, some people would say like a pen uh, from like a brooch or something, but the only thing with that is it might have a sharp point and it could damage something if you jammed it in there too much. But if you have like a little flat head paper clip uh, to push in there, then it should, the little caddy, that's what they call it, the little caddy should pop out and place inside the caddy and then push back into the car the phone of course you have to make sure that your uh, phone case is off and push it back into the phone this can be a little bit tricky so just make sure that you're you know push it in the right hole because <laughs> you don't want to damage the phone you just want it to be where it's supposed to be and of course this is so to make sure it doesn't fall out in any way. If it doesn't close all the way, pull it back out and put the try to put the memory card back in the caddy again. Uh, the memory card will go only go in one way and it kind of has these uh, extra little cutouts here so it'll only fit into the uh, the section there one way. Okay, so let's talk about what it's going to do next, okay? After we eject the little caddy, we put it back in the tray, okay? And push it back in there. Now remember, if, it, if you have to jam it a little too much, you need to make sure that everything's set inside the caddy. Okay, just like this. Okay, did you get it? Did you get it back in the, uh, yeah, because it should talk about, let's see. Okay, so we'll talk about that. So I'll give you a second. And see, did you get it done? Mac, did you get uh, the memory card replaced? Or not replaced. Did you get the memory card in there? Did you find a small paper clip? Which could be the, the hard part. <laughs> I know that for myself. Any luck?
pretty day outside. <laughs> I have a nice window. And next month we actually have the birding classes again. And I have to tell you, the birds are very, very happy. I've gone through a few bags of uh, this black oil sunflower seeds but quite quickly. So they've been very happy. And uh, let's see, blue jays have started to show up. So I haven't really had any blue jays, which can be kind of mean birds. But we can talk about that more in the birding class. And the squirrels every once in a while try the pole. And then with the, uh, the hood catch, now of course I'm blanking on what it's called. They push on that and it moves and it's heavy and it makes a noise. And then they're like, eh. Or they climb up and they freeze like, oh, I don't know what to do. And then slide back down. So I don't think uh, squirrels are too persistent to just give up. So I don't think they have, I have stopped them. I think I have slowed them down from reaching the uh, bird feeder completely. Of course, the fear is once they actually do reach the bird feeder, because they will figure out a way eventually. <laughs> um, they can actually tear up the bird feeder, probably just one messing with it for once. So I'm not looking forward to that at all. <laughs> Okay, now after you enter the uh, enter, after you insert the uh, SD card, we'll actually have to format it. But I believe Samsung, and most of the time the Android devices, once we insert them. It should usually pop up and say something about formatting it if this is a new memory card. But to actually format the device, we need to do launch, settings, tap device, cares what it says. Storage, advanced, SD card, and then tap format. Most of these, once we insert our uh, SD card it, and it notices it's blank and hasn't been formatted, usually it'll say something about formatting it. Alright, so let me know if you need any help, more help with that. Maybe you was or were successful. Were you able to put the new memory card in? Uh, did you get to take some pictures? I know you asked a 
question about some of the pictures. Let's see if I can, uh, I don't think I can do that. Let's see. Ah, that worked. Yay. So big thing about the camera, this has it here. Talk about the camera settings. Uh, just calling it the brightness, but I believe that's the exposure on there. One big thing is to tap. Zoom in, you can do the pinch and zoom. Do you realize it's not real zoom though? You could crop the picture later if you wanted to. Holding the shutter button, it talks about on the side. And here's a big one, locking on your focus with your exposure, okay? So locking the focus, tap on the screen, what you want it to focus on or autofocus on. And it should autofocus with the exposure as well. Uh, you may even notice that my camera kind of goes in and out. So if I put my hand up, it should change there you go and then it guesses what the exposure is and then it kind of dims itself so it's not overexposed so that is what it's doing okay so there's your exposure you could go in the settings and change it I could even tell it to not do that uh, since it mostly just uh, not like action shots or outside or anything I could go the settings and kind of lock what the exposure is I, if I wanted to, let's see. So it has your phone has something called screen scene optimizer, which looks interesting. It tries to adjust the settings after it recognizes people, food, or if it's a picture taken at night. <laughs> which could be interesting. Let's see. Let me zoom in on this, by the way. Let's see, when the photo recognizes the subject or scene, the scene optimizer button will change and optimized color will appear. So that is, let's see, that's what this button does right there on the screen, which is kind of interesting. One negative thing we have about with our touch screens in general is, of course, if we, if we were in Windows, I could take my mouse and we hover over something and it'll tell us what it is like that the back button re refreshes the home button but on a touch screen we actually don't get that option so they have to be a little bit more um, clear about exactly what the fit the button does because some features we may even not even realize that we have that because it didn't give us any information Let's see, it also has a mode called live focus mode. Let's see, take photos that focus on the face by blurring the background. Ooh, kind of like a green screen effect. Okay. Use this feature in place that has a significant light. Let's see, some window. Let's see, the background blur may not be applied properly in the following conditions. The device or the subject is moving. The subject has a similar color to the background. Kind of spelling spell it the UK way. So that's the live focus mode. Let's see. 
Okay, so taking portraits that stand out using the live focus feature on this shooting mode list, tap live focus, drag the background blur. Let's see, drag the background blur adjustment bar to the left or to the right to adjust the blur level. That's here. It's here. When really, when ready appears on the preview preview screen, tap the tap button to take your photo. Let's see if it shows uh, another preview of that. It just kind of is talking about the the bar itself. Okay. Because you can also edit the background blur level of a photo taken with the live focus feature. See, change your background effect and then click apply it says Let's see shooting modes to change the shooting mode drag the shooting modes list to the left or to the right to swipe left or right in the previous screen See photo mode. even has beauty effects it says <laughs> the beauty effects Okay. Applying beauty effects, you can select a filter effect and add also modify your facial features such as your skin tone or face shape before taking a photo. Okay. It's your video mode. That video, here's our pro mode. Okay. So some some of the software that comes with the phones take the cam to take pictures usually doesn't have uh, some of these extra features that apparently this phone has. So a lot of the time you have to actually download some some extra software uh, like the Camera Plus or something or the Night. Uh, it's not Night Mode, Nightscape, something like that. Uh, software to be able to access it. So this actually will deal with the white balance. Okay. The ISO, which you, most of the time I recommend having that on automatic. And here's about changing our pro level. So if you did go to the settings here and you wanted to adjust that by yourself or adjust it yourself, you go in here to shooting mode, tap more, and then tap pro and then you'll see these extra settings. There's a, um, uh, all I can think is paranoia mode. <laughs> Panorama mode, there you go. Sometimes if you're taking a picture and it's important enough, you need to make sure that what your white balance is. So basically, if I held up something to the camera, like just a blank white sheet of paper which I don't have right in front of me but you could do that and one of the things that'll do is it actually will come in and it'll allow it to adjust okay to adjust to the right setting for the white balance Maybe I might be able to do that by holding this up if I can get it in the right area
we just dimmed it kind of okay so that didn't really work well but if you had a, a white sheet of paper it could probably guess what the white balance is a little bit better uh, it's kind of funny because uh, the color white is one of those things that we'll look at something we think it's white our brain tells it's white and then if we actually looked at the, the comparing it to other color shades we could actually show that wasn't white at all just because your brain just kind of fills in the blanks but the computer taking a picture and then you look at the picture and go that doesn't look right you're like I don't really know why it looks kind of grayish is because your white balance was off okay so this is about adjusting uh, uh, customizing your settings Activating or deactivating the flash. A uh, big one here is a lot of times you'll go places, um, let's say like like a museum or something, and they may say no flash photography. They actually don't mean no photography at all, okay? But it, they want to make sure that the flash isn't damaging any of the paintings or anything, okay? So they'll have signs like that. Uh, around live animals is a big one to make sure that it's been deactivated if you can you may even want to turn off the sound unless it's a real digital SLR uh, which makes a mechanical noise so it can't it's not automatic you can be able to uh, change it to uh, no sound at all okay So these are some of the different settings, okay? This even gets into adding uh, filter effects, aspect ratios, let's see, the, um, select a metering method, the calculate, Here, this averages the entire scene. Kind of find the white balance in there as well. This has some other features here. The scene optimizer we talked about, the hold. Now I will tell you this, this is one that I've had some issues with. Uh, the format that a lot of our cameras are now taking photos in, I've even have it have had it, excuse me, have had it where in Windows the previewer I couldn't actually view the pictures it had taken okay so need to make sure if you are having that issue that you actually install the I can show that real quick So if you actually are having a problem viewing any of these pictures on your computer, like a Windows computer, it doesn't actually come pre-installed. And if you have your settings set to this, so if it's saving any pictures, do you realize you just install this extension? And then it'll actually allow you to view the pictures, okay? And you can just find that you saw what I did I just typed that in Windows 10 and then do the search and it pops right up this is from the Microsoft website and if I click get which I already have it installed on my computer 
it'll get it'll automatically open up the uh, the store Microsoft Store to be able to download this and then you'll be able to view your pictures okay Here's talking about resizing our videos. And if you have any problems viewing the videos, then also do a search. So for the pictures, you may need to install this. For the videos, you should install this anyway. I've even had it where uh, the picture one didn't seem to work and I installed the video one and then all of a sudden they both worked, okay? I don't know why it's saying that, the, the, the 99 cents. Huh. So when I got it, it didn't cost anything, of course. Should have just been automatic. It'll, it'll say free saying that I own Windows or something. I'll have to look into that. Okay, so... Covered all of that, I believe. Big one is a big one. Uh, big one is a big one. Big one is to make sure that you have your grid lines on. I talk about this in the introduction to computer class, um, introduction to photography class. Sorry. <laughs> and one of the things is is that we can actually have our our aspect ratio. No, excuse me. We can have our a rule of thirds on the actual screen. Okay. So they call them the grid lines on here. We also have our galleries to look through, some basic editing to do on that. Here's our play a video. Oh, capture current screen. There you go. So you can do a screenshot. There you go. Create a GIF. So with this little video, you could create a GIF. What's to be the big point about that? Well, you could actually text it to somebody. That's what the big point of that could be. Which would be pretty fun. It's about viewing our details of what our video is. There you go. A little bit of information. Oh, there's your creating albums. And this is their feature, the Samsung Cloud. Of course, I do recommend using the the Google uh, Cloud. Give me one second. I can show you a quick clip of that.
of course, is the, the big recommendation is to actually use the Google Photos um, app. You download that at googlephotos.com. I, I mean, uh, to get more information or access your gallery, but it's an app that you download to your device that you can install. Uh, it's free as long as you have your your settings set to high quality. Okay, photos. You're good to go. And it also will sync, automatically sync your pictures back up to the cloud so you can access them and then share them with others as well. You can do some basic editing, crop, adjust, lighting, and more. Okay. You can also share your pictures a lot easier as well. And that's free, so I do recommend that. Of course, we talk about deleting images as well. Uh, <laughs> and I guess this is more kind of silly stuff with the, um, with the app or the camera. Change the face shape is what we talked about a minute ago. Interesting. Camera app tap more. Yeah. A lot of neat little extra features they have on here. Okay, so that looks kind of like we've covered most of what the camera can do, or at least what they're pointing out here in the manual. I actually found this pretty quickly. It's kind of just search to find the manual and I'll post it into the chat for easier access. And I hope that helps. Okay, so Unless I have any other questions, I'm going to talk about some of the stuff that's available through the library. Some fun free stuff. Free, free, free. So if we go back to our website here, we talk about a list of different branches, our digital library, where's the, uh, let's see, hold on, okay, so if I do books, okay, ask away, hello KM, how are you?
<laughs> ah, okay. Okay. That's a great question. So Kim asked, uh, what what I don't need uh, the gadget help, but want to know more some recommendations about self-paced courses for someone interested in rejoining the IT field. Let's see. Okay, Bachelor of Science, uh, Computer Science, been out for a while and would like to get caught up uh, while helping uh, <laughs> help my kids. There you go. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay, now through the library, we can actually have access yeah, let me pull that up. Through the library, we actually have access to uh, something called, um, uh, of course, I'm going to blank on it. Give me one second. Uh, my brain just, there you go. Uh, the Continuing Education. Okay. So if you actually go to gchrl.org and you have your library card, hopefully you've already set up your username and password. Okay. So you can just kind of log right in. If not, you kind of go to the bottom here. I'm already logged in, so it's not going to ask me that. But if I go, if I click the, the menu, and I go here, it says Education and Research, and go to Continuing Education, we well, can actually have access to a place called Universal Class. So I'll click that, and mine's going to auto log me in, so let me, let me do that real quick. So basically you sign in using your library uh, username and password. If it doesn't work for some reason, uh, basically it may say something to the effect of, hey, we need you to sign up. Some of our the things that we have access to, we may actually have to set up a separate username and password. Uh, so this is universal class. It does have a uh, the cost if you went here directly, but as long as you're going through the library and using our, our username and password, it's completely free. Okay, so they have tons of classes on here. Okay, tons of them, lots of different interest stuff. Let's kind of look at our catalog a little bit here. So if I come up here. Anything specific you're kind of looking for? Um, a lot of folks coming in, they basically want to say stuff like, uh, I want to make sure that I have had training on the basic, the newest version of Office so I can put that on a resume. That's usually a big one that people ask. Of course, we do um, some of the classes like our Word. Next month, we actually have the Google Suite class coming up. Yes, this is free. <laughs> free is great, isn't it? Uh, so our library, you know, our library is paying our fee basically, it's being our friend. Um, but yeah, so we actually have uh, computer training. It's one of those that pops up here. Now they, the big thing about this is, and the reason I really talk about this too, is that uh, there's lots of places I could send you, of course, of course, YouTube videos, you know. Of course, my classes, we covered the basics that people just want to really know and stuff. But this actually... Uh, are more long-term courses, but you do do get a certificate with them as well. Okay, good, 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 good. So, you know, here's some of the popular ones that just pop up here. Excel, you know, even a basic typing and keyboarding class, they have one that says it's 20 hours. But do you realize that, let's go to, uh, let's go scroll down here and here's about WordPress electronics, digital photography, there's Excel, um, Google Slides, Google Sheets, Google Docs class. Let's see, Access Publisher. Okay, so here's Word 2019. Okay, so let's click that. It's 15 lessons. Let me see, the average hours people spend spending is seven. Of course, uh, you know, that'd be uh, 
seven episodes of a TV show, but the end of this, you get a certificate <laughs> instead of the uh, the uh, um, the plug for the next uh, season. So if I scroll down here, and I'll actually play this real quick. I don't. It only says it's two minutes, so I'll disappear for a minute. Word 2019 is the latest version of the most popular word processing application on the market developed by Microsoft Corporation. You can't escape the number of businesses and individuals that use Microsoft Word on a daily basis. Regardless of your own word processing program preference, you're bound to do business or communicate with someone who uses MS Word exclusively. For this reason, you need to know what it can do and how to do it. This course will show you the many ways that you can integrate Microsoft Word 2019 into your everyday life. In this course, you're going to learn how to navigate the new MS Word interface, create new documents and open existing documents, use templates, edit and format text, paragraphs, and whole documents, use Microsoft Word for desktop publishing, create brochures, flyers, and even business cards, insert headers, footers, images, graphics, and video, use mail merge, create a table of contents, compare, merge, and protect documents, proof, print, collaborate, and track changes in Word documents, create even more impressive tables than ever before using new formatting tools, and much more. We'll start with an introduction to the core features of MS Word, but then quickly move on to the way Microsoft Word handles formatting and styles so that you can customize the look and feel of any Word document. We then move to more complex features such as creating tables, desktop publishing, and mail merge. We'll also review how you can use MS Word to create and manage long technical documents that may require headers and footers. We also go over unique MS Word methods for proofing and editing. For example, should you need to work with a third-party editor. We will show you ways to add comments and track changes as you pass documents from person to person. Finally, we cover more complex topics such as recording macros and working with Visual Basic for Applications VBA. Our course takes you from the basic introduction to the more complex tools of Word so that you can master the application whether for business or personal use. With clear and concise step-by-step -step directions, beautifully illustrated lessons with screenshots, and HD video tutorials, this Word Word 2019 online course will teach you everything you need to know to become a Microsoft Word power user. Note, you do not need access to MS Word software in order to successfully complete this course, although it is strongly recommended in order to follow along with the course examples. Okay, so the big thing about this is you saw they even went into a little bit of extra stuff, more than what you know the common person would need to know. The main thing with a lot of the employers, I believe, is that they want you to show that you are not, you know, you're up to date with the current software, whatever that you're working with. And the other thing is, if you do do, um, you know, something like this, it does actually have a certificate. It shows that you began something, you completed something. This is something you can put on your resume, of course. Let me zoom in a little bit here. So, Showing that I have training for the latest Microsoft 2019, you know, whatever it is uh, that the employer uses. Um, if it's a database program, does they have the access on here? You know, if they're using Google Suites, you know, you can actually know that you have a full, you know, overview of that. It depends on what their teams use, if they're sharing stuff back and forth. That's the really big thing now is share. Um, is to be able to know how to do that. So it's basically it's a cloud based, you know, the documents on the cloud so every team member can access it. Um, so basically it goes through the course is here, talks about everything they cover, talks about the lessons. So we course through the library because we're not doing, you know, individual payments, which just op everything's open to us because we're going through the library. You could jump into the class take um, just a certain lessons if you wanted to if you didn't want it not if you do a certificate but if you want to learn specific things okay so you see it's very in-depth it even goes into mail merger you know and then even proofing there you go and using the mic uh, the macros on here but at the end it actually will come up and you actually do do uh, get a certificate okay it's something you can print out 
And the other thing is, is what I really like about this is that it actually is verified with a serial number and it is something that you can put on a resume and actually they can click a link and it'll take you to the Universal Classes website to show that you did complete the class and that you do have a certificate. Okay, so it depends on what you know job you're going for or whatever. When we do the uh, the introduction to uh, the Library Resources class, one of the things I'll say is let's uh, the one of the classes they have on here is just a general receptionist. Okay, so let's say it's just you know answering the phone. It's like a six hour uh, class or whatever. So if you had two people come in and you saw a resume, and I'm just talking about, you know, you know, for myself or whatever, showed me a resume or you showed you a resume and one person, they had everything had the same, same education, you know, everything's very similar, but one of the people who are trying to apply for the job um, uh, basically has taken training. So that person would already have a leg up on the other person just because they had already had some kind of training show that they started and completed something of course and then be able to um, show that uh, you know to a person now of course you know uh, you can get official um, Microsoft certification in, in office and all that that's a lot more detailed um, there is a person at the library will do I'm not sure how you know because we're doing the stay safe and everything but there are ways that you can actually take official um, tests and then you come in and do a test and all that stuff and then you'll be officially Microsoft certified most jobs that's not needed I'll just say that um, the main thing is if it's uh, tech certified in certain things too but yeah now uh, so yeah hopefully that helps <laughs> yes absolutely you know exactly what I'm talking about there Yes, so the, the A-plus certification teaches how to troubleshoot computers. Yes. So those are actually still around. Let me, let me, I can show you that too, if you're interested in that. Of course, they would cost, they would go extra. So, let's see. Okay, so this is all I did was I in Google I just typed Microsoft um, the Microsoft certified and this actually popped up. So apparently this is their full talking about the certificate. Talks about earning college credit. Again, this is one of those things. If the job um, I'd only really do this if it was like something that the job required. Okay, uh, this job requires you to be Microsoft certified because it's a tech job. Okay, that's the only thing that I would really think about this because this is donating a whole lot more than just even going to the um, uh, the universal class that I just talked about. But a lot of employers may not need that. They just want to show that you are, are up to date. And I think this is the, we're trying to think about which one it is. It's the associate one. Let's see, which one is the, there's one that is a major professional one. Yeah, so these are the MTA certificates. Again, it's one of those where you have to study. Um, they take it very seriously, okay? And then you have to have a proctor to take the test, usually. I do know we had the Evans Library. Um, we actually have one person that is certified to do that. I've seen his name on the list before. But as you see, you go in and see which ones you're interested in. The cost, I'm not sure about the cost. I do think the, the cost does change. So let's see a general, uh, let's just say we just want a general uh, so one big thing is uh, we talked about it being Office um, uh, 2019, which is the latest version of Office if you bought the product, put it on your computer and you have it forever. Uh, Office 365 is a 
yearly subscription service, and that's where they're, they're, it's their version of the Google Suite. Um, so let's see what that's like. Okay, so what's the prerequisite? Knowledge of fundamentals, no prerequisites. How many exams do I have to pass? Need to pass one exam. Let's see, will it expire? Does not expire. But I will tell you this, the, um, you know, if you're taking a, an exam or program certification based on, it will be very clear that it's based on that version of that software. So then when the newer version comes out, <laughs> Let's see, how do I get the cert the certificate? Earn the MTA certificate, helps prove knowledge from the technologies, having a validation certificate from Microsoft help you launch a successful career. Okay, good. I mean, start with the library, yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea. Now, this is, like I said, this is a professional. This is like someone that um, they have to, they work at a flat out tech company and they have their, on their, resume it says you need to have a Microsoft certification to work in this job period so you see it is kind of a get ready um, and try to find out what you're looking for exactly what the requirements are uh, it could be possible that even a business would pay for something like this okay like I said I'm not sure what the cost is right now but it goes into a lot of information right there and I will actually copy this and I'll post that into the chat too. But yeah, I really like the, uh, like I said, the this one is the professional one. This one's more of the kind of an everyday person, but I don't really know anybody personally that actually had to say, hey, I had to get this the office, you know, basically for the job that I, I'm looking for too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But yeah, the library one, get you started. Like I said, it is something that you can definitely put on a resume. You've had the training. You can kind of go at your own pace, you know, and it will mean a lot more than just saying uh, someone, you know, says, hey, uh, have you used uh, Word before? And you go, yeah, I, I know how to use Word. Uh, but you can say, yes, I have a certificate in Word or I have a certificate in Excel or whatever the position is or whatever that it says it requires. And if we go back, so that's the latest one there. And like I said, it being free through the library, see how that goes too. Here's PowerPoint here as well. I actually enjoy PowerPoint. Of course, we have Word, Excel classes. They're about two hours, mostly there for beginners. Um, well, not really beginners, but they're for anybody that wants to know the information. So. And of course, here's Windows 10 as well. Let's see. Oh, so that's really the main. There's OneNote. I actually do love OneNote. Ah, troubleshooting. <laughs> very good, very good. I enjoy troubleshooting a lot. To me, it's a lot of puzzles trying to figure out exactly what is the the common issue and a lot of uh, the, did you turn the device off and turn it back on again <laughs> do you have the latest version of the software on there uh, okay okay and and some of that stuff it depends on what you're looking for uh, they may be real specific about we need you to learn you know this version of the software because that's what we've switched to, we're upgrading that, or whatever the system is. Uh, it happens a lot. All of a sudden, one company says, um, okay, well, we're all going to switch to, uh, you know, a completely different system. So everything that everybody else knew is out the window. We need everything. Absolutely restarting. Uh, that's basically what it is, yeah. Here's publisher, so this is more specific. And uh, some of the, like some of this office stuff, uh, there's off, also a big one, there it is. Microsoft uh, Project Manager, ooh, that's a big one. 
because some managers actually really do have to use that in their their job there's access Ooh, that's a big one right there too so of course you have your basics one PowerPoint Excel um, of course Word and then you get to your more you know job specific this is only publishers really only for someone that's you know publishing things um, newsletters uh, actual documents uh, there you go right there and some of the other stuff like CSS or JavaScript or any of the rest of the stuff that really is job based or even project based but you may want to learn I don't know if you want to do the full six seven hour uh, deal here uh, next month and I'll actually have it on the schedule on Thursday next month I am doing a uh, Google Suites class it'll just be a two-hour class and we'll kind of go through the whole uh, Google Suite so you kind of get used to it and there's a lot of companies that are uh, have Google they're using it as their Gmail and then they get a whole suite and they're using the cloud services and that that's what they want their employees to use so everything I won't say everything most of the things that you've learned from Word you know PowerPoint and the rest of it will work because Google knows that's what everybody has used in the past of course you can save all those documents but the big thing is that they, they put you in teams they want you to be able to work uh, in the cloud and work online as well so that and the office 365 is kind of the way where we're going with um, team based um, projects I guess you'd say it makes things a lot easier than forwarding <laughs> a document back emailing a document back and forth and then people are like well, which version is this is this the latest version yes if, if you if you ever been on a team and had to send a bunch of emails back and forth this is this is definitely the way to go this cloud-based um, you know document that you can share with the whole team and the boss too can see it at any time if they want to and uh, log in and be able to work on that helps a lot with projects um, you know you're going to publish a document some kind of newsletter um, it helps a lot so if you don't have experience with that I definitely put that on a resume and uh, look into it as well yes absolutely uh, the school systems there's even uh, I heard uh, someone talk uh, I don't know it was about uh, about three months ago or so and they actually started talking about because Google had jumped into a lot of the schools and a lot of the schools had even allowed them to uh, basically donate uh, the Chromebooks that there are some students probably uh, the age from uh, 6 to about 12 that have never really even used a Mac never even really used a, um, a Windows machine they just know Google Chromebook and uh, th that's kind of Google's goal so um, they're used to the turn the thing on and it comes up and then they have to be connected to the internet to be able to access anything so Google's really pushing hard so we're gonna have a whole lot of um, students that are coming along they basically expect everything to kind of work that way they like their little apps they want it to be alive they want to be able to to work on a document on one Chromebook and then pull their cell phone up and then keep working on that same document and then go to a, you know a computer and pull up a web browser and log in and then they're working on the same document so that thing about files on flash drives these younger students coming up they don't know anything about that and that's not the world they grew up in so Google's kind of pushing for more cloud base absolutely and uh, being able to share there you go right there uh, and uh, you know I, I even talked about how um, uh, kids growing up they they're using PowerPoint all the time <laughs> even in an elementary school they're like okay well you have to get up and do a PowerPoint presentation next week and you're like oh is this you know it's like yes they that's one of the things they're doing so they're almost expecting uh, everybody for the for jobs in the future to be able to gotten used to using the cloud working on teams remotely you know doing video chat and stuff they're going to expect that in the future for sure and uh, you know be able to share your documents and uh, there you go back everything up so the idea of oh I 
I, I lost my project because it was on the flash drive. It's kind of the past, yeah. Yes, it is, yeah. Uh, I, the interesting thing about it is uh, people ask me, and the first Chromebooks that came out were really cheap, and they work pretty good. Of course, you have to be online most of the time with the Chromebook to work properly. Um, but now the Chromebooks, they're beefing them up, and they're starting to cost as much as Windows machines, uh, which is interesting because I can basically access everything on a Chromebook that I really need just by using the Google Chrome browser. So why would I spend, you know, if I just buy a Windows machine, I can maybe never even use Windows and just pull up the Chrome browser and access all the same apps and everything. Uh, but why pay more <laughs> for a Chromebook that doesn't have Windows on it and then I don't have access to the other program software that Windows can use, of course. Uh, but yeah, it's an interesting it's an interesting push that Google has decided to do with the younger kids and stuff. Uh, but yeah, but yeah. It's interesting, and and you know, like I said, having something on a resume, uh, you know, that looks current, looks like I'm I've stayed up on what's going on, is really important uh, when you're you know talking to somebody about being hired. You know, and uh, you know, talk about what they're interested in, even though some of those that may say uh, on the resume need this, this, and this, they may talk to them and go, well, that is on the you know that's the company puts that on the resume. But it's not fully, fully needed. But yeah, yeah. I hope that was helpful. In any other questions, or uh, do you want any more detail about anything else? I'm trying to think. There's a few other ones. I like the universal um, one best, but there are some other online ones that'll talk about training and everything. But again, this is free through the library, and. Um, you know, they, the certificate means a lot. You started, you, you finished, and here's a certificate versus some of those that are just kind of uh, glorified, you know, YouTube collection of videos, as, as nice as it can be. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Let's see. There is, hang on, there, give me, give me one second. There is trying to think because I actually had a web link it may take me a minute to find it but I actually had a web link that is a, a website that did uh, list a lot of online training okay okay this, I think I think I found it already so we've got that this is also one like I said I haven't verified all these this is a website called Open Culture, and they will actually promote uh, the free education stuff. So it's kind of like a uh, a one place. Of course, I'm not sure you know what all's on here. I played around with some of it, but if you scroll down, like they'll have free textbooks, audiobooks, K-12 resources, videos, and I believe they will connect up. Let's see. We'll go up here to the top. Online courses. But they just have, yeah, I know, I know, go away. They just have a huge list of uh, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> a lot of um, audio classes, video classes. They will connect up with the different universities that are giving out. Um, stuff as well so I'll post that in the chat do any of these will I have to log in it's possible uh, some of these may be demo classes where it's like the first you know few weeks to try and encourage you but as you see a lot of these are kind of in a one place where it's uh, stuff from different universities let's see uh, let's see if we find IT a little bit in here history and how update is this I think the website keeps it you know regionally you know updated but it could be something to kind of play around with and look at a little bit too media studies music 
philosophy, Let's see, political science, where's IT, there's religious, sociology courses, what sociology courses, okay. Now, do these do certificates? I don't think so, but mostly it could be something you could, you know, interesting thing. Well, I was just, there you go. So there's computer science as well. Very specific about what topics they're covering, but even just even talking to someone or even being a part. So who I just watched, you know, a TED talk. A TED talk could even be uh, beneficial talking to someone you know, for a resume or just talking to them about a position said, so, oh, I recently saw a TED talk talking about that. And you were talking about little bits. They have uh, kid TED talks as well, which are pretty neat. Um, some of them are actually animated. I've been recently watching um, uh, some of the TED talks that are they've animated about some of the Greek God uh, storylines, and it's it's pretty interesting. <laughs> There's Python right there. Might look into that. But yeah, so that's called uh, openculture.com. And like I said, it's a lot of links here, kind of to the audio videos. And it's probably just like college professors in classrooms, you know, talking. They've posted it, um, you know, and then it's been kind of broadcast everywhere. So. I'm sure there's other websites similar to this, but it's not really specifically where it looks like. Okay, well here's like Blender or something like that. Of course, if you're interested in coding in any way, I do recommend the Code Academy, but last time I checked, they may have changed now, but the last time I checked, they weren't doing, um, Let's see. Certificates. Let's see if I can find. But specifically, that's for jobs, you know, website design. You're working somewhere that needs database. But if you want to play around, learn a little bit of basic code. So if someone says, hey, do you have, you know, we need to think about HTML, you can say, sure, I've taken a little bit of HTML. You know, I've built a website in WordPress, and the versus someone that has never done anything like that, that can mean a lot too. Okay. Let's see. Ooh, they have added Swift in there, so that should be interesting. Used to, they had a big deal about, yeah, so the basic is free daily but I, I believe the last time I checked they were going to talk about doing certifications but they don't you just kind of finish the class and they go good for you <laughs> but yeah so Code Academy right there alright good I'm glad hopefully that was helpful in any way let's see Uh, we got learn from home. Find the right course, take a quiz. 11 new skills you can learn from home. Oh, and you know, if you've got little ones, you know, anything to kind of get them with playing around with a little bit of basic coding, the Scratch is great. This afternoon at uh, two thirty, I'm actually doing a Scratch. Let's make a game class. It'll be here on the same YouTube channel, and uh, I'll post the link. Uh, it'll be here on the same YouTube channel, and I'll also post the link in the the Columbia County Library uh, Facebook page as well. Uh, but that's going to be at 2.30, and it's a lot of fun, okay? Let's 
anything to kind of get folks interested to go, well, I've done that. You ever done any coding? I've done Scratch before. It kind of counts. There you go. Java was the main language learned in college. There you go. Yeah, uh huh. Program factually, programming was my favorite, though I miss the people aspect. That's right. <laughs> Okay, good, good, I'm glad, I'm glad. Um, really excited because of course we have the class this afternoon and then on Thursday we're doing um, our introduction to Raspberry Pi class and stuff and I've got a new one open. We're gonna talk about some new projects with the little gadgets and stuff that I've got in here. And the other thing about it is we're also going to be doing a new class which I actually is called uh, Scratch to Python. So um, I've got, just got certified through the Raspberry Pi um, uh, uh, organization and it's, uh, you love Scratch? Well, let's play around with Python coding a little bit. And one of the websites we use basically turns Python into kind of blocks like Scratch. So it's kind of a good introduction uh, to more coding languages and stuff. So yeah. Well, good. I'm glad that y'all enjoyed it. That's great. It's a fun class. I really do enjoy. Um, and when you go to the to the explore section of the Scratch or website, it's amazing what some of the folks are coming up with. Uh, it, it really is amazing. All the stories. Uh, the even after the class yesterday. I played around some with uh, uh, the candy click game that I showed for a few seconds and uh, it was pretty fun a little bit addictive so yeah okay let's see I'm trying to think about any other resources hmm Okay, let's see. Yay, good. So this is, we're, you know, of course can't do hands-on stuff, okay. Good, I know, I miss being at the library too. <laughs> we're always trying to have something fun, something new, going to the library for everybody, little bits too. Good, I'm very glad that y'all came, that's awesome. That's awesome. Did y'all fall in love with the little Raspberry Pi? Did y'all get one? Did you do projects with it? What did y'all do? And the thing I'll talk about Thursday is some of the stuff I've done with mine too. Like I've done like an arcade machine out of cardboard. <laughs> is one of the projects. Of course, making it a media player. And I'll be showing the, um, the little LEDs. So one of the things I hope to accomplish, maybe for a future class, is that we can like make it like have little wheels and stuff and drive around and stuff. So that'll be planned for a future, future, future. And I also think about uh, when I was little, what kind of classes was, were I interested in? And we also, um, my cousin was involved with Boy Scouts. So we did stuff like uh, we went up to Lockheed Martin and they actually had a, uh, of course they're not doing it now, I'm sure, but maybe in the future they'll do it again. But Lockheed Martin actually had a um, robotic lab and it was like the Lego, um, Mindstorm, and then they all had specific goals to do, and we spent a whole day uh, there um, working on it. And it was a lot of fun. Okay, good. Good, I'm glad. Scratch is awesome. Okay, good. Good. Scratch goes, oh man, there's so many things that you can do with that. Uh, and, the, and doing the class from scratch to Python has been interesting because uh, the goal is that we do some things in scratch 
and then you can see how it can be a little bit shorter or easier to do in Python. Of course, the negative part about Python is it doesn't have like the little characters and stuff. <laughs> Where Scratch has that built in and you know, you make it and you can see it and animate it. And uh, Python doesn't really work that way. I'm trying to learn a little bit more about the Python game part. Uh, they have like drawing with turtles, which we'll probably do that in that class. And also make her like a rock, paper, scissors game. But it's not as visual as Scratch because you know you got the little cartoon characters on there. But uh, the, some of the code could be so advanced in Scratch, which is interesting. A lot more than what it just you know looks like. Oh, it's little animation things. Like yes, but there's so much more you can do with it. There's some other websites too that have. Uh, let's see. There's one that I found. Let's see. And it was like by Bill Gates or something uh, was pushing it. Let's see. think let's see okay I think it's uh, code.org that has a lot of stuff too okay Jane good I'm glad <laughs> Yeah, it does. It's so visual. There are other ones as well um, out there, just in case uh, I've actually taught doing the, the scratch to Python. One of the things interesting is they talked about all these coding clubs and some of the teachers are always looking for something you know new to kind of throw in there. And they said their kids kind of got so used to using scratch that they wanted to you know try something different. So he said that he uh, basically found the, the Lego block one and for for the python and let's see i can actually show you all that real quick too and that's what i'll one of the classes i'll be talking about next month let's see where is that okay it may take me just a second to find it but anyway this is an interesting one it's called code.org and they've got all kinds of classes here. Um, have you tried uh, to do any JavaScript with them or anything? Because you know in JavaScript, or I think you said Java. But they actually have. Where is the? They had a silly dance thing that looked it was really fun. Okay, so they're just talking about their mission statement. So this is kind of their, you know, people posting stuff. Oh, look, someone's made a Plants vs. Zombies. Love Plants vs. Zombies, I remember that. Let's see, Flappy Birds, Minecraft stuff. So you can kind of see they have kind of their own scratch going on, but still scratch is still the biggest one that, you know, most people know about or have used. And where is my, let's see. Here's like game, aha, I think this is this not yet. Yeah, this is like called dance party. <laughs> And the interesting part is they actually have licensed songs, which I won't go into too much here.
My name is Mural Kadvi, and I'm a dancer, software developer, and creator of Illuminate. Computer science relates to creativity in numerous ways, immeasurable, really. I mean, once you have the ability to write software, you can put ideas into anything. I do it with light suits. There's so much you can do once you have the tools to write software, and it's, the possibilities are really endless. Over the next hour, you're going to get started with computer science by programming your own dance party. We've assembled some hit music and a team of great dancers for you to play with. You'll be using blocks of code to choose different dancers. Change your dance moves, make them respond to the music, and make them interactive. You'll see that your screen is split into three main parts. On the left is a play space. This is where your dancers so it looks very will show similar up. To a the middle scratch, area is the really toolbox. Specific on what it's New doing. blocks of code will be available in this space or its goal, as I you go through the lessons. Say. The space to the right is the workspace. You can drag blocks out of the toolbox and into the workspace to build your program. The instructions for each level will be up here at the top of the screen. If you need a hint, just click the light bulb. To start off, let's make a new dancer with this red block. First, drag it so out of the toolbox. You'll see the dancer. So, sure. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So the interesting part of up here is I won't play it because I know YouTube may jump up and say, hey, uh, you know, what is that? But they actually have licensed songs, <laughs> which absolutely blew my mind when I actually was playing around with this. So like Old Town Road is on here and uh, uh, Call Me Maybe, Coldplay's on here, Imagine Dragons songs on here, Jonas Brothers, Justin Bieber songs, Katy Perry, Firework is on here. So it's a little bit this is this is really just to make the little characters dance so it really is a little bit more simplistic than uh you know you're trying to do as much coding with um you know with the uh, uh, scratch but the the licensed songs really blow there's there's ace of bass i stole the sign uh aha take on me which i won't play anything because youtube might uh but it here's mc hammer you can't touch this <laughs> but you have to drag the th characters over there and it really makes it kind of any age group could play around with this and kind of look there's ymca um all kinds of fun stuff fan the, the disco uh, let's see will i am's on here i do think he actually did is a part of this website is um one of the trying to, uh, to encourage uh, coding skills because I know he's big into that too but yeah here's Madonna's even on there too so it's it's, it's pretty neat uh, recommend kind of play around with it some of it's a little bit more simplistic like I said because their goal is just to make the little characters dance and you control them but it's a good place to start and it's uh, uh, code.org and they have a lot of stuff but yeah yeah play around with this stuff and like I said I think this is actually Bill Gates's situation or, or website. I'm trying to remember. Let's see. It's a nonprofit organization. Let's see. Mostly trying to encourage. Yeah, but there you go, right there. So, it talks about their philosophy and everything. So, yeah, it'd be a fun thing to kind of check out and uh, kind of silly there at the same time like I said they've got game stuff on here and it's similar to scratch but it is a little bit different too so if you go to the main website uh, code.org I'll post that in the thing here and click create and they got all the different labs and there's the dance party lab here's the game lab app lab and let's do all so we can just kind of well, that took me to the same place. Anyway, artist. Here's the game one. Let's see. Oh, I have to log in and stuff, so I won't do that right this second. But yeah. But yeah, good place to start too. 
but I hope that was helpful. <laughs> okay, good, good timing, because we're actually reaching the end of our, our session here. Um, so thank you for coming, KM, and thank you for coming, Jane. Thank you for coming, Mac, and everybody else that'll see the, the video later, too. Please don't forget to share, and we're also going to be doing our Scratch uh, game, uh, game class this afternoon. And I'll kind of go over some of the stuff we have coming up. And like I said, on Thursday, we're actually going to be doing, I'll po be posting the um, uh, what we have coming out next month. Some of that's already being posted to the uh, main library. And tomorrow at 11 o'clock, we're going to be doing a Google, the Google search, Internet Safety Basics. And part of that now is going to include... Uh, and learning for about scams, researching scams, also researching uh, fake news as well. So we'll be doing that, and also talk about keeping yourself safe from uh, you know viruses and stuff like that. And then at two thirty, we're going to be doing our introduction to Razor Pi computing and ideas, and we're going to find out what's inside this box. <gasps> it might be a new Raspberry Pi four. We're gonna have to see what's inside. We'll have a box opening. And we'll also get to look look at our different little gadgets that are in this box here too. Oh, what's in that box there? Okay, so so that's coming up for the rest of the week. Do realize that we do have our videos still up from previous classes as well. Most of these are on the Facebook channels of the different libraries, Facebook channel, the Facebook pages of the different libraries, and also. Uh, the newer classes are here on our main channel, YouTube. The easiest way to find our YouTube channel is just to search for GCHRL video, and then you'll find our channel on YouTube. A little bit of extra note here, our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Of course, we're not doing any live classes or anything. Curbside Holds Pickup is available. Please thank the librarians for doing that. And you can go to GCHRL.org for details. Of course, you can call the library with questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Please don't forget to like our Facebook pages, like our videos, and also subscribe to our Facebook page, our YouTube page, too. Well, thank everybody for coming. Uh, the uh, drop-in uh, questions and answer, Gadget Help with Alex, sometimes we're not sure what we're going to talk about. But hopefully I was helpful and, and answer everybody's questions. And I, I look forward to seeing you guys in a future class and everything. <laughs> so I wish you a bye-bye. And have a great morning. And hopefully I'll see you in one of the classes this afternoon. Or the class this afternoon. Bye-bye. <laughs>